And the Philippines National Police Force are up next here on day four, the fourth edition of the UE SWAT Challenge. The trophy in the first three editions has not left the United Arab Emirates, but the way the Akhmat team from Russia are going this week, this may be the first time that it does. The current champions, Abu Dhabi Police, first of which uh, Abu Dhabi Police B team will be going out after the Philippines National Police Team. And uh, the Abu Dhabi Police currently lying sixth in the overall standings. I'll come back to them in uh, just a second. You can see there the rope bag. Another uh, piece of equipment, and just like the first three days, the equipment they go out with, they must return with. There will be procedural penalties if they don't come back with um, a piece of kit, other than the ropes, of course. And obviously, a uh, it's a more serious violation if they leave behind a weapon. And there goes the fifth and final of those short range handgun targets as the first of the snipers comes round the corner. And the assaulters climb up the back of that SWAT truck through that window, which is not very big. I, I walked the course this morning, smaller than it looks on that uh, angle. Put it this way, enough to bang your head off as you're coming through there at the top of that SWAT truck ladder. This early in the morning, it would uh, wake you up. Snipers are in position for the first of their two range challenges. And the one on the left hand side of your screen there that you can see he's up and running. The one on the right has got issue with his magazine. He seems to have a problem getting that magazine inserted. And this is becoming an issue for the Philippine police. Now he's in position. Has that. Uh... Well, it looks to me like he's chambering the rounds individually. I thought I saw a magazine a little bit earlier on. Maybe he's. Maybe he's abandoned that. Five down, one to go for the snipers. As the first of the snipers sprints into the tower block. As we see the uh, third and final assaulter make his way down that tower. I walked up these stairs this morning and I was out of breath. I was carrying nothing except a mobile phone. So I have some empathy for these guys carrying all this kit. Remember body armor, webbing, Weapons. Pretty quick and efficient. 
from the assaulters. Now, all three assaulters, even that third one that you're seeing there, even if they don't engage any of their targets, they still have to complete those obstacles over the wood wall, the green wall, and under the ping pong table. So obviously that third assaulter from the Philippines police team did not engage either the Texas Star or the, the uh, white discs. One down. That's two misses on that left hand side. Two down. A miss again. Now, I think, are they going to swap? Or are they done? I think they're done. I'll just get confirmation of that uh, rule, but I don't think the snipers are allowed to engage each other's targets. Unlike as we see in the handgun zone today, in difference to previous days where the first person there or your best shooter can turn up, start uh, having a go at that Texas wheel or at the white discs. When it comes to the snipers, they must stay on their allocated targets. So, like I say, I'll try and get confirmation of that, but that's my understanding. So, They've left targets behind, have the snipers. It's now their turn to come down the wall. The snipers, unlike the assaulters, do not have to ring the bell. And they sprint across the finish line. And it seems to me that the, uh, the best teams, as we stop the clock at and around the six and a half minute mark, yeah, 629.03 for the Philippines National Police Team.